Deacon, Nova Scotia. Thank you, Chair and Ministers. Thank you both for being here with us today to answer questions on C-56. I'm thrilled that we're beginning to see meaningful amendments to the Competition Act. I'd like to start with a general question, if I could, uh, to you, uh, Deputy Prime Minister Freeland. Calling C-56 the Affordable Housing and Groceries Act is a bit of a misnomer, of a misnomer as it relates to competition, because competition, the Competition Act is a law of general purpose right across the economy. As such, what are your views on the need for a whole-of-government approach to foster robust competition across all sectors of our economy, well beyond groceries, but especially as we've been seeing increasing concentration in all sectors, including banking, telecom, airlines, to name just a few? Well, thank you for the question. And um, I, you know, Francois Philippe and I work together very closely, and so I'm going to echo um, part of his initial answer. Um, seriously, like, I really believe that these changes we are putting forward and that you are debating to competition law are a generational change in Canada. Um, they reflect a profound, I would say, evolution in approach to competition in Canada. I think they reflect a recognition that we're growing up and getting stronger as a country. Uh, and that, it, as I said in my opening remarks, um, the efficiencies defense now, um, we don't need any more. Uh, and I think that that, um, I agree with you that competition is not only about the grocery sector, uh, but the grocery sector is very significant for Canadians. It's something people are very focused on right now. And it is an area where I think we can all directly see that increased competition would give Canadians more choice and help to stabilize prices. This act will do that, and it's one of the reasons that I'm very excited about making this change. Thanks very much. And banking, it's great to see the promise of open banking, so we'll see that, that follow through in the in, in the. That's an important thing in the Fed. <laughs> it's not just the promise, we're moving ahead yeah. with it. Super, thank you. Mr. Champagne, great to see you. Section 78 of the Competition Act relates to abuse of dominance. FINA amended the section to add in a new subsection, and I'll quote K, directly or indirectly imposing excessive or unfair selling prices to the list of possible offences. Concern has been raised that this amendment will require the Bureau to enforce price controls and that the Bureau clearly has indicated that they don't want to have that responsibility. Does the preamble in Section 78.1 provide sufficient legal precedence to limit the application of all subsections from A through the proposed K only to acts that are, and I quote in the, the, the preamble, intended to have a predatory, exclusionary, or disciplinary negative effect on a competitor or to have adverse, an adverse effect on competition. Let me first thank you, sir, because, <clears throat> Senator, you've been uh, very um, seized with competition in this country for, for a number of years, if I would not say decades. And, and just if I may get back to what Minister Fionn was saying to your first question, there's a direct nexus between affordability and competition. I mean, what, what you were saying, <clears throat> it is true in the grocery sector, but I agree with you. Uh, this is the most major reform in, in about four decades. And, and like I said, having more choice, more transparency, and you've seen the fight we've been fighting with respect to the grocery sector. But as the regulator of telecom, I would say you've seen that last time we said no to the merger to make sure we'd have more competition and a fourth player in the country. Um, to go back to your specific question, let me say there's no place for price uh, regulation into the Act. Let me be very clear on the Senate floor, so for all senators and all the Canadians watching at home, uh, there is no place for price regulation in the Act. Um, this amendment was made because that's one element that could be considered. We've seen certain cases. You will recall that this, this particular amendment was, was uh, added by the House in the context people were referring to um, in the, uh, for example, service station area in rural community. You could see that, you know, there is a link with price, but I would say we rather uh, deal with the cause as opposed to the effect. And that's why I think having more competition in this country, it is so fundamental. Uh, I, I would echo the word of Minister Freeland. This is a generational opportunity. And there's a lot of things in the act going back to the, I, I'll, let me say, the so-called efficiencies defense. Yeah. I mean, no other 
G7 countries certainly would have anything like that. And I think it's about time that we put consumer first, that we put Canadian first, and that we put competition first. And, and certainly the Act and the, uh, you know, C-56 will go a long way in trying to restore more competition in this country. Thank you very much, Minister. I'll just keep, if I could, keep going sure. with questions to you, sir. Um, during FINA's review of the bill in the House, there was an amendment to allow the Competition Commissioner to initiate market studies and compel the, pro the production of evidence, but with the terms of reference being approved by the Minister. These are important changes, but some experts still question whether the, the, the Commissioner is being provided with sufficient independence to design, initiate, and implement a market study and compel the production of evidence. What assurances can you provide to calm these concerns? What I would say, we, we struck the right balance between the two. As you know, uh, there was the power of the minister to demand uh, that there would be uh, market studies, but there's also a number of check and balance in the system. You have to publish the mandate. The report needs to come within 18 months, their judicial review. And, and with respect to the mandate, you've seen the interaction between the minister and the commissioner to make sure that the mandate first would be published and that people would have the right to comment. And I think we really strike the right balance there because you want, uh, from a government perspective, which you represent the interest of the people, to be able for the minister, whatever uh, that minister might be in the future, to demand that a study would be made in a particular industry. Because as a broader perspective, the government may have an agenda uh, to look at an industry and see what we need to do in the interest of Canadians. At the same time, I understood that the House wanted that if a minister was to fail to act, in the case where you should or she should be acting, that this could be also initiated by the commissioner. And, and I think this is, this is good. I mean, in a sense, you may have someone like me who is very focused on that, but you could have someone in the future who might be less focused on. But if the commissioner is there, you have the minister and the commissioner, I think we, this is the right balance we need in order to make sure that these studies would be initiated responsibly, uh, they would be targeted, they would be time limited, they would be subject to, judi uh, to judicial review, and that they would be afford, you know, afforded the confidential treatment on, under Section 11. So I, I think this is the right balance, Senator, to, to serve the interests of Canadians. That's super. So you don't see a, a potential for the Commissioner to be restricted in moving ahead? It's a, it's a collaborative... I, uh, I don't see it, and I must say, it is very complementary to what yep. we've been doing. If you've Thank seen you. in the uh, grocery... A market study, for example, that's been made. There's a lot of findings that we are putting in place now. You know, looking, for example, at you may have seen the article in the Toronto Star this morning that uh, I'm, I'm looking at you know international players who may be interested in the Canadian market. And I can tell you that this uh, amendment, and we'll come to that, the restrictive covenants, which is the third section, what they call property controls, has been an impediment. Believe it or not, once CEO told me he said many years ago we looked to enter into Canada, but minister, we could not find a lease for the number of stores we wanted in Canada because of these restrictive covenants. So maybe today, if we had that, we would have more competition in the grocery sector. No, absolutely. Thank you, Minister. Um, just looking at the uh, uh, repealing the efficiencies defense in Section 96, I, I, ask this, uh, I ask about it because the United States and the EU both consider efficiencies in a merger review, but not the way uh, Section 96 was drafted. The, the underlying belief in Section 96 was that we had to protect Canadian companies so that they could big, get big enough to compete globally, but that thinking now has been completely discredited with a lot of evidence. Is the repeal of Section 96 designed to remove pro-competitive efficiencies from merger reviews or simply to change the way in which those pro-competitive efficiencies are considered in a merger review by implicitly including it in Section 92 when you're looking at merger effects? efficiency that would be pro-competitive. And to your point, I think you, you, you understood it right. What we need to stop is that this is being used or historically has been used to, to, to allow mergers that are against competition to go forward. And I think Canada was an outlier in that. I mean, it's quite uh, time that we tackle that. And, and I must say, not only was supported by, by our government, but you would have seen, uh, I, I may say to the Conservative Senator, there was also a private member's bill. Uh, from the Conservative to repeal the efficiencies defense. So I would say there's broad consensus that as a mature economy, we don't need that anymore. And, and it's really uh, an aberration, I would say, that it's still in the books uh, in the laws in Canada. And that is going to be addressing that. But to your point, uh, to the extent that the, uh, the uh, efficiencies would be pro-competitive, they would be considered, as you rightly said, by uh, the Competition Bureau. And that's a good thing. Thank you so much. Okay.